Good morning, afternoon, evening, night, whenever you're watching this, welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're going to be talking about density. We're going to be talking about the physiological density, the arithmetic density, and we're also going to be talking about the agricultural density. We'll be discussing some world trends too with population throughout the video as well. The main focus though is on density. We're going to be looking at not just what these things are and what they mean, but how can we use these numbers to be able to understand society and countries and the future? And why are these densities so important for us as geographers to understand and even more important for our policymakers to understand? All great stuff coming up. So before we get started, just a quick reminder to use the guided notes. If you haven't heard about them before, you can find them in the description below. They go along with the video and they help you focus on all the main concepts. And that way too, when you're taking your notes and processing the information, you'll remember it and you won't have to do, hopefully, as much work studying for your test or quiz. Now, one of the things that we see going on in the world today is urbanization. This is a very new trend. I mean, people are now leaving rural communities, small communities, and moving into the cities. This is an ongoing trend that we are seeing, especially in the developed world. And the developing world is slowly transitioning. The other thing that we are seeing is population is increasing. We are still seeing growth. Now, the world population growth has slowed down over time, and we'll get into that more in the demographic transition video and also our population pyramid video. But it's important to realize these two trends are happening, and this is why density becomes so important. With urbanization happening and also an increase in our population growth, we need to make sure that we're able to handle this new amount of people and also be able to figure out where are people living? What do we need to be able to provide for them to make sure that they can be successful or at least live healthy lives? So let's break down population density. So this video is talking about population density and population density just comes down to how many people are living in an area. But we can break population density down into three different sections. We have the arithmetic density, the agricultural, and the physiological. Now each of these on their own are important. However, they're even more important when we compare them because we can see some overall themes and they tell us a lot about a country or a society. Our first one that we're going to get into is the arithmetic density. Now this is the easiest density to figure out. Uh, it's used a lot because of how easy it is to obtain and all it is showing us is just how many people are living in a certain area. So to figure this out, what we do is we take our total number of people and we divide it by our total land area. That's the important thing here. We're dividing them by total land area. This is going to include areas that people probably can't live in. If we're looking at a country though, this is their total square footage that we'll be looking at everywhere. So this would include any spot that maybe people aren't living in as well. So that's just one thing you have to remember with this type of density. Our next density that we're going to go into is the physiological density. And this one is really important. And this is where we can start to see how comparing densities actually makes these even more important. Our next density is the physiological density. Now to figure this density out, we have to take the total number of people and we're going to divide it by our arable land. Now this is different than the arithmetic density. That one was looking at total land. Arable land is land that we can actually grow and produce food on. So what this number shows us is how much food do we need to produce per kilometer of land or whatever unit you were using for your math when we're looking at the numbers here. So it's really important to understand this because this will show us how much food are we going to have to produce. Now we're going to connect also eventually into trade and other things as well because that can help counter countries that maybe don't have a good physiological density. But let's take a minute to actually break this down. So we know arable land is land we can produce food on. We know that this number we're taking our amount of people living in society and we're dividing by arable land. But what does that number really show us? What does it mean? So let's look at two countries here. Let's look at some examples. Always helps. So we have the United States. The United States, our physiological density is around 175. So it changes over time, but for the most part, we're right around there. Egypt, on the other hand though, has a physiological density of around 2,300 people per kilometer. Now what does that show us? One of the things we can see by looking at these two numbers in these two countries is that the United States, we don't have to produce as much food per kilometer of land. However, Egypt has to produce a lot more food per each kilometer of arable land that they have. 
And that can be a big difference. One of the things we could also get from this is that's gonna put a lot of stress on their environment and on their farmland. One of the things that could lead to is desertification or the environment is no longer gonna be able to support the people there, it'll die off. It's also not gonna give as much time for nutrients to be able to get replenished within the soil as they have to keep producing more and more food. So there's a lot of stress on their resources to be able to provide for everyone. This could lead to a variety of things. Maybe Egypt is going to struggle with being able to feed everyone. Now we still need to know more information before we get down that route, but it's something that we can start to think about. The other thing that we could see here is if we compare arithmetic density with our physiological, we can also have a good understanding of what's going on with land inside a country. Let's go back to Egypt for a second. Egypt's arithmetic density is around 80 people per kilometer. That's not that high especially compared to their physiological, which we've already talked about is around 2,300. One of the things this shows us is there's actually a lot of land in Egypt for people to live. They are not all clustered together. They can be spread out. However, the majority of that land is not farmable. So it's not arable. We can't produce food on the majority of the land. So our physiological density number being so high shows us that we'll have more of a stress on the land and we have to produce more food per acre, per kilometer that we're talking about, compared to where people are. People are more spread out. So these are just some interesting things that comparing the densities can show us, and also just what the physiological density shows us. Other things that this could lead to too is maybe Egypt's gonna have to focus on trade with other countries. They'll have to import food to be able to make up for the food that they can't produce themselves. So we can see different things going on with these two densities. Our last density is going to be the agricultural density, and that one is gonna show an entire different side of this story. To figure out our agricultural density, we'll have to take the total number of farmers in society and divide it by our total amount of arable land. What this will show us is how many farmers are working each kilometer of land that we have. So let's actually take this and apply it to our countries that we've been talking about, the United States and Egypt. If we look at the United States, our agricultural density is right around one. Egypt's, however, is right around 826. Now, that's a lot of farmers, and it's a lot more than the United States. We, again, have an agricultural density of one, meaning we have about one farmer per kilometer of farmland, or arable land. And Egypt, again, has that 826 farmers per one kilometer of arable land, of their farmland. And why is that? What do you think this shows? Take a second and try to think to yourself. This is telling us something about society and about their agriculture in particular. And this is really helpful for us to understand about even the development. So I've given you a couple different hints there. Try to figure it out. If you need to pause this video, try to figure it out on your own. If you figured it out, let's see if you're right. So one of the things this actually shows us is technology. The United States, we have a very low agricultural density because we have more urbanization, more people live in cities, and we also have invested in a lot of machines to help out the farmers. One farmer can do the same work as 826 farmers in Egypt. Not because that farmer is smarter and stronger, but because they have more resources to be able to help them with their jobs. We have combines and tractors and reapers and all these different things to assist farmers. Now we'll get into farming and different types later on in our agricultural unit. But really what this density just shows us is the amount of technology being used. Egypt doesn't have as many resources and hasn't maybe invested in technology to be able to support farmers. So they need more manual labor. We could also see for efficiency. It's more efficient to have less people doing the same job. The United States, we have more efficient farming methods. We're able to lower our agricultural density. And when we lower that, we can have those people then doing other jobs in society and producing in other areas. Egypt, on the other hand, is not as efficient. It takes them 826 people. We're only doing one in the US. So there's differences there. Those 826 people all have to do the farming for just that one plot of land. They could be doing other things if it was more efficient. So this density is really important for us to understand of efficiency and the amount of technology being used to be able to produce food. Hopefully, you're starting to kind of understand these densities. Let's go over one more quick review and kind of compare them all to see some bigger trends because this will help us out, especially when we get into the part of looking at data and having to apply that data to different situations and to be able to interpret the data and understand what's happening for these countries. 
Very important stuff that we will be doing later on. So before we look at some of the trends and connect all these together, I want you to review for a little bit. What I'm gonna do is put a bunch of different questions on the board, and what I want you to figure out now is what are the answers? Try not to look at your notes or Google anything. This isn't gonna be graded, it's just for you. And if you do, no one will know if you cheat. But try not to. The point of this is to see where you're at, and it does help to practice. Even if it's frustrating and you don't understand it, by practicing and trying to see where we're at, we can better understand where we need to go. So figure out what the arithmetic density is and how we figure it out. Also figure out what the physiological density is and how we figure it out. And then agricultural density, and you guessed it, how do we figure it out? Try to also understand too and put down what these things show for each one of those densities. What do they show us? What information do they provide? So pause the video. If you need more time, make sure you pause it. Otherwise, I'm gonna go over the answers now. Hopefully, this wasn't too bad. If not, let me know and I can help you out. So the first one, our arithmetic density, is the one that's the easiest to obtain. This is just showing us our total population and it's divided then by our total land. So that's just kind of showing us where people are living, how close together are they. The next one, the physiological density, is showing us our, you guessed it, total population divided by Hey, arable land. Yeah, not total land. Remember, we already did that one. It is arable land. And this can show us a bunch of different things. How much stress are we going to put on our land? How, many, how much food do we need to produce for each unit of land to feed our population? So we can see different things there. The last one, then, our agricultural density is going to be looking at our farmers. So we have our total farmer population divided by arable land. And this shows us how many people are working our land, how efficient are our technology that we're using, how efficiently are we using our people and our capital to be able to produce stuff. One of the things that we can see is actually by when we lower our agricultural density, we can increase our economy overall. Specialization starts to happen with less people all having to produce agricultural products and being able to specialize into other areas, then we can get more growth and productivity. At the same time though, this doesn't say that agriculture is by any means a lesser profession. And actually what we start to see is as that agricultural goes down, we can get more specialized agriculture as farmers are able to do new things and be able to produce a variety of products. So we also see agricultural change in shape and become even more productive. Now kind of connecting all of this together, we can see a couple different trends. One, these densities show us if as we as a society are going to need to rely on trade. Maybe we'll have to import food. It'll show us are we going to be able to feed our current population. When we also look at population pyramids and we can see our growth rate and we look at our NIR, that natural increase rate, we can see what's going to happen for the country in the future. Are we going to have food shortages? Are we going to have famine? What's going to happen there? Do we need to start storing more food or do we need to start investing in more technology to be able to support our agricultural industries? So these are really important for us to understand. Even by comparing our physiological density and our agricultural density, we can see a bunch of themes as well. So let's just say two countries have a really high physiological density, but one of those two countries has a low agricultural density. Well, one of the things we could gather is that actually the one that has a lower agricultural density probably will be less stressed. Their land will be treated better. They'll be able to feed their people easier because they've invested in technology and have become more efficient than the other country. So even though a country may have a high physiological density, that doesn't mean they're going to struggle with food. We have to start comparing to the other densities and even doing more research into what's happening with that society in particular. I hope this video has helped you understand the densities and also how to apply them to the world today. I'm Mr. Sin. Make sure you subscribe and support the channel. Hopefully this video helped. If it did, subscribe. It helps me. And at the same time too, you'll get notifications when I post more AP Human Geography videos. Until next time, I'll see you online.